So we're leaving Mountjoy, Pennsylvania. Pretty much been raining the last three days. This kid loves to dip stuff. Anything she can dip. Yep. Yeah, you like dipping it? We were on our way to stay outside of uh, Philadelphia, but we are making a <laughs> surprise detour. We had uh, somebody reach out to us and offer some hookups right outside of New York City. So uh, we couldn't pass up this opportunity. Uh, we probably don't know what we're getting ourselves into. I'm so excited to see New York, but I ain't gonna lie, a little nervous, especially uh, with the toddlers. I think that's why originally it did not get put on the list for this trip, but when opportunity comes knocking, you just take advantage. And so here we come, New York City. So if you're driving a large gas RV, um, I think it's actually a little bit easier than diesel to fill up because with diesel, with a diesel you can pull in anywhere with the truck stations. I mean that's totally true. But sometimes you get stuck on back roads and there's not truck stations around, or you may think there's a diesel pump and that one pump is out. What you're looking for with gas, the main thing, if you've got a longer rig like ours, uh, you're looking for a station where the fill up is side by side. To the gas station not facing the store uh, what i'll do if i have time before we leave is i'll actually get online look at google maps and check out a couple of the possible gas stations we'll stop at and i'll i'll get out google street view and with street view you can look and see uh, you know which direction the gas pumps are facing and almost every time if they're facing to the side the other thing is you can almost always come in one end fill up and exit on the other side. So it's an easy in, easy out if they're in the side like that. So this isn't an ideal situation. It's a highly uh, congested area. Um, I really like Flying J's. If you can find Flying J's, they've got all dedicated RV lanes and you're not blocking people in. Like I'm blocking, I'm blocking the pilot truck that supplies the fuel right now, so I'm hoping he doesn't have to move anytime soon. <laughs> but you do get, you know, I'm looking for that swing in, swing out as far as the station. Hey, did you like staying at the house? With all the doggies. Nathan's filling up. And while he fills up, we're giving her a break out of her seat. <laughs> we had a really great time staying at my cousin's house. You liked the dogs, didn't you? Did they have cute dogs? Sonic. Sonic and... Was his name Gizmo? We had a great time, didn't we? It was like being on vacation. It's just nice sometimes to have a break because we do get to travel all the time and it's nice having your house but it's nice having a little break and feeling like you're on vacation too so we had a good time can you say new york new york so a random side note of something i did not know in new jersey apparently you can't start pumping your own gas you've got to have an attendant do it so <laughs> So one thing we've encountered in the east, a whole lot more than we encountered in the west, was wrecks. I don't know if we even encountered a wreck out west, to be honest, that put us in a slowdown. I think if we saw on the map when we were supposed to get to another point, unless we stopped and ate or got fuel, I mean, that's when we got to that point. So if you're in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, 
and you've got something that's over 50 feet long, I mean, it's really hard to change lanes. Uh, somebody's pretty much got to help you out and let you over. That kind of adds to the stress if we're driving the RV through uh, different wrecks and things like that. It's been a long day, but we made it to New Jersey. It was supposed to be, I think it said three hours is what it was supposed to take, but it took us close to five after two wrecks, traffic, being backed up, all that good stuff. So, um, <laughs> welcome to the Northeast, I guess. But uh, we're here, and uh, big shout out to Chip for giving us his full hookups, 15 miles from Manhattan, and there's a bus station literally just right across the road i think it just it says a lot about the rving community we've had so much help with people inviting us to cookouts and getting us into our site and when we got our first trailer uh it was kind of a nightmare <laughs> we right after we bought it we pulled up to a campground and hooked it up and uh yes i know i should have already known this was going on but i didn't check it totally out because we bought it next to a beach, and I, they told me it had been winterized. Well, it wasn't winterized. Well, we bought it in a hurricane as well. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> we didn't know the hurricane was coming, so it was a very quick inspection. Um. Uh, and we were told by a little sweet old couple who sold it to us that everything was fine. Just please don't make them get out in the hurricane and hook it up. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> so we didn't, and... Yeah. And it was a got, disaster. Yes. When we got away from the hurricane and hooked it up at our first campground, water came pouring out. It looked out. like a hurricane did. Yes, yes. We didn't know anything about RVs, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I knew that water was not supposed to be pouring out the sides and out the back. So, um, yeah, needless to say, it was it was like three grand in damage of stuff that had been busted up because they didn't winterize it right. But, anyways, yeah. <laughs> say all that That's to say. Yeah, story. RVers are great. Um <laughs> But they, they still helped us out with some of the repair costs. And uh, while we're getting the RV repaired, um, you know, almost nine hours away from home, uh, this these uh, camping families across the road <laughs> uh, sort of took us in and cooked for us. And um, they even let Marissa and Hensley stay there at their site while I went and tried to negotiate things with the repairs for the <laughs> RV and all that. So um, It's very, very sweet. You know, you could live in a neighborhood for years and sometimes not talk to people that live close to you, but when you RV, I mean, people in and around your RV, just they're just nice. They're super nice. They want to talk to you and um, yeah. help you out, do anything they can for you. And that's what's been so fun about this experience as well is like meeting those new people, people we never would have met, um, opening up to us, reaching out to us, just... Um, you know, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and meeting some really awesome people by doing this experience. So. It feels good to be back in our RV because that might be a feeling or something you wonder about an RV is will I ever feel like I'm at home? And, and we do. It was it was really weird at the beginning, especially when you're driving your home down the road. But um, we've come to really feel like this is our home and uh, we miss it when we're not with it. Ooh, 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 